This technique is called dry point. This work here has been scratched into a plastic plate with a very simple scribe, effectively a needle. The lines and the textures are created using this. You can see there's some ink still left, which is why it's easy to have a look at this one. But if you look very carefully, you can see the Japanese geisha drawn onto this plastic plate, which would ultimately, just like this one, be able to be printed. Lino is something that most everyone has heard of. When you're using lino, you're printing off the surface. So that means that you can cut into the lino, achieving really detailed things or gouging quite large areas. This is the tool and you change your nibs to suit. So detailed cutting or sometimes creating textures with various substances. Photopolymer is a very interesting technique, a lot of fun. The plates are bought wrapped in black plastic. They have a metal back but a photosensitive front. There are a lot of steps that need to be taken to produce a print from these, but effectively the easiest form would be to take a photo, to transfer that photo onto the plate, and it's quite a simple um, procedure, but all of mine are drawn first, of course, by me. So you can see all of these very detailed works and it will still print out and be a hand-pulled print, an original, each one. Metal plates. Are used and you hear that word etching used a lot. That means that you're going to push the ink into lines that you've created and you're also going to be able to create tone, light tones, mid tones and dark tones. You can see here in this Chinese figure the lines but the Back, the background has been allowed to deepen very, very much. Same as on this little pot with a dragon and also with the Turkish lights. Whatever is shiny is going to be able to be light when you print it, but if it's going to grab the ink, then it's going to to be dark. Here's an example where the geisha is drawn quite strongly. A background plate is a little softer which allows you to create an image that's strong but soft in the background. A little watercolour can be added sometimes after you've printed to make a certain area pop. There are 3D works that you can enjoy. In this one, I've created a small book. Everything needs to be made by the artist. The box, the book cover, everything. And in this one, it was called For the Love of Paper. I have a very large paper collection from various countries in the world and 
if I've been lucky enough to see, as I did in Vietnam, the couple being married and lighting lanterns, then I've added those little drawings along the way. And then when you open to the back, here's a glimpse of my Japanese paper collection. There are over 275 papers represented here. It can be stretched out, but it's still a miniature. The technique that I'm using at the moment is called Collagraph. Collagraph starts off by using mount board, the simple mount board that you would use to surround something that you're having framed. So this is what I meant when I said the artist starts with nothing. <laughs> so on that mount board, I need to create an image using textures. So if you look closely at this miniature, you can see various things that I've very carefully glued on. There, there are cutouts, there are pieces of lace, there are threads. Um, I have a very big collection of all these things and then sometimes you're really happy with the result, sometimes not. And again what you have to be thinking about all the time is of course it's going to be a mirror image and also the things that might look light won't necessarily print light and the dark things won't necessarily print in a dark way. You've just got to think about texture, not the colour of what you glue on. So in this one I was able to give a nice brightness to the jug but when I was creating the plate I needed to make sure that it was a smooth surface that would allow that pa uh, pale colour to pop out. The tablecloth is lace and the fruits are from my paper collection, a lot of Japanese paper. Here's another one. This series was created to be shown at a an historic house so I just really liked those subdued colours. I've been having a little play with abstract work which still has the same principles. You've got to think about what you're putting on the plate so that the end result is what you're after with a balance of lights and mids and darks. If something goes a little wrong, you can always use your print that you're not happy with and add whatever you like to create a mixed media piece. Also, when you've finished printing from your plates, you can frame them up as well. So these are collagraph plates and that's good because there's an agreement in printmaking that what you create in an, an addition uh, is the end of that plate's life so it's good to be able to frame them up and pass them on and then the temptation isn't there to print more from them. Just to finish I'm going to quietly take you to have a look at the miniatures that are hanging on my wall. These are ready for exhibitions or just back from an exhibition. Perhaps you can identify the methods that I've used to create them. <laughs> 